Hi, this is Glenn Jewis with a, a new video tutorial for you. You can find out more of what I do over my website, which is updated almost daily, which is glennjewis.com. I'm also on social media, your Facebooks, Twitters, Instagrams, as unsurprisingly, Glenn Jewis. But this is episode 83, and in this one, I wanna take you through all the retouching steps that I've done on a recent picture of this beautiful border collie. Here you can see the out of camera shot. I wanna take you through the whole lot to end up with a picture that looks something like like this. Now, before we actually get into the retouching side of it, let's just quickly look at the out of camera shot and let's just mention about the photography side of it. Now, this picture was taken during the middle of the day, so it's actually quite bright, but we can see here we have a black background around our dog's portrait. Now, to actually get this in camera without putting any kind of background behind the dog, there's a technique you can use that I call the invisible black background. Now, I've actually got a video to show you how you can do that in camera. So if you go to my YouTube channel, which is YouTube, youtube.com forward slash Glyn Dewis and if you scroll down you'll see a number of playlists. One of the playlists is called Photography Tips and Techniques and in there you'll see a little video called The Invisible Black Background and if you watch that it just takes you through just a few minutes to show you how you can create that black background technique using just one off-camera flash. Now regarding the equipment I use for this particular photo shoot of the dog if you go to my website glyndewis.com Let's just take you back to the home page here. And if you scroll through, you'll see the actual picture here of the Border Collie. When you click on that post, you'll see that I take you through the whole making of this particular picture, giving you an idea of what's, how the lighting was set up and actually you'll see the positions of the light. I also include a little link that will show you the exact kit that I'm using. Now this is a piece of kit that I've actually set up all in my bag, which I carry around all the time, called my Anytime Anywhere. And it just consists of one off-camera, four AA battery flash, and one of those LumaQuest 3 soft boxes that I attach onto that little speed light type flash. Very, very small, very convenient, but a great piece of kit just to carry around for those opportunist moments whenever a portrait presents itself. But that's enough about the photography, let's now dive over to Lightroom and get on with the retouch. But before we do, just to mention, if you haven't got Lightroom, if you've got Camera Raw, you'll be able to do exactly the same steps because the develop engine, which you can see over on the right hand side, has exactly the same, same things in there for you. So let's get cracking. Okay, so to start off with then, I'm just gonna look at the background, which is nice and dark over on the left-hand side. There's just one area just above the actual dog's ear over on the right-hand side of the picture, I can see an element of the background coming through. So I'm just gonna get the spot removal tool and just cover over that one there, just so we can't see it coming through. In fact, once we've done that, I might just get the uh, adjustment brush, just double click on the word effect so that it sets all the sliders back to zero. And let's just take the exposure down just a little bit and I'll just paint in that top corner there just to make sure that it has gone really nice and dark. So that's looking good like so. Now the actual coloring in here, I'm really, really pleased with straight out of camera, but I will sharpen this up. So let's just scroll down, go to the detail tab. We'll take the amount slider and I'll bring that up to around about 60. And obviously at the moment that's sharpened the whole of the picture, but I really, I only want the actual attention and the sharpness to be on the center part, just where the actual dog's nose is and the middle of his head and the eyes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold down my Alt or Option key, click on the masking slider that then turns the screen white which means that the whole of the picture has been sharpened but as I drag over to the right hand side we can now start to limit where that sharpening is anywhere that's black hasn't been sharpened anywhere that's white has been sharpened so now you can see it's mainly that central area that we want so that's nice and sharp there now I really want the eyes to stand out on our dog so as well as doing the sharpening there I'm also going to get the adjustment brush again Double click on the word effect to make the sliders go back to zero. And let's just bring the sharpness up just a little bit. And we'll click on the bottom here, show selected mask overlay. And I'll just come in, just reduce the size of the brush and we'll paint over the eye just here, just so you can see the area that I'm actually affecting now. That's this little red overlay. Now we know we've painted that area, let's just turn off the overlay and now we can see we can just use the adjustments over on the right hand side to really bring the sharpness to make those eyes stand out just that little bit more. We can also use the clarity, just bring that up to the right hand side. I'm gonna go too far with that, but we can see it really does make the eyes start to pop. So I'm really liking that at the moment. 
All right, so now that I'm happy with the eyes, let's just click to come out of the adjustment brush. And now the next thing I want to do, if I just zoom in, we can see we've got this one stray black hair here, which uh, is on our dog. Now I know this is part of him, but I'm finding that just a little bit distracting. So I'm going to come over again and get my spot removal tool. And I'm just going to leave it set to clone at the moment. Let's just bring the size down. And I'm just going to get a brush that's big enough just to paint over that hair like so just to see if we can remove it, then let go and see what a great job Lightroom does. That's not bad. Great thing is here as well is, although I've got mine set to heal, or sorry, I'm actually set to heal, I can also now in real time click it to clone to see if that does a better job for me. So there's heal and there's clone. Hopefully that's showing up on your screens. I think I'll leave it to heal. That's done a pretty good job. So let's click to come out of the spot removal tool and then zoom back out again. Now, ideally what I want this actual picture to look like, although we've got a nice black background around him, I want to make it look even more confined, the light on his face. So it's almost like he's looking through the, a hole in a fence or looking, we've got a little bit of light on his face, really kind of like hiding away. So let's just scroll down and we'll go to effects and we've got the post crop vignette. I'm just going to bring that over to the left hand side just to darken those outer portions a little bit more. We will direct the lighting just a little bit more later on as well, but for now that's looking pretty good. So now we're going to move on to creating a, a black and white conversion. There's lots of ways we can do this. Sometimes I might use a plugin like Silver FX Pro, uh, but we'll actually do this all within Lightroom or Camera Raw, depending on what you're using. Before we do that, though, let's just get the crop tool by pressing R, and I'm just going to drag up the bottom part here just a little bit to around about there. Then we'll go to the develop module and let's go to the black and white tab. And I'm just going to press V to give me a straight out of the bag black and white. And already that looks pretty good to me. I don't feel that I need to come over here and really adjust much of how the black and white is looking. I quite like that. But what I do want to do is add a little bit more focus or attention rather again onto the center part of the picture around the dog's eyes and on his nose. Now I'm going to do that using the adjustment brush to add in some clarity. So let's just go over to the right hand side of the develop module, click on the adjustment brush, again double click on the word effect to reset all the sliders and then I'll bring the clarity up just a little bit and just so you can see where I'm painting I'm again going to turn on that um, mask overlay by putting a tick in the bottom left hand corner of the screen there. So now when I paint over you can see with this red overlay exactly the area that I'm on about that I want to actually add a little bit more contrast in. We know that when we want people to look at certain parts parts of the picture, those areas are going to be brighter, they're either going to be sharper, or they're going to be areas with more contrast. At this stage, we're just adding in more contrast. So let's just turn off the overlay, and now we can see here where that clarity is affecting just in the center part. And I'll bring that up to around about the 20-ish mark, something around about there. So that's looking pretty good. Now the next thing I want to do is actually give the illusion here of a shallow depth of field. By the very nature of the technique that I used to photograph this dog, because it was bright, it meant shooting with an aperture of around about f16 to make it go dark. Now that means that the dog's nose is in focus all the way through to his ears and way beyond. But I want to create the illusion of a very shallow depth of field so that it was shot or it looks like it was photographed at around about f2, f2.8. And we'll do that by going into Photoshop. So we're going to go to the photo menu at the top of the screen, edit in, and at the bottom here we've got the option of going as a smart object where we can actually make adjustments to what we've already done. But I'm quite happy just to go straight into Photoshop now. So I'll use the top option, edit in Adobe Photoshop CC 2015. Now that we're actually in Photoshop, one thing I want to do is to give this almost like a cartoon or painterly kind of effect. It's a technique that works great on pictures that have got lots of detail. And being the dog with the fur, it's going to work an absolute treat. Now to do that, what I'm going to do is create two copies of my background layer. So I'll hold down my Command or Control key and press J twice to create two copies. The first layer I'm going to call Look, because that's the actual layer we'll actually add the painterly effect to. And the one above it we're going to call sharpness and you'll see why we need that in a moment. Let's just turn off that top layer and only work on the layer that's called look. So we're going to go now to filter, 
noise and reduce noise. And when the big dialog box comes up here, we've got a load of different sliders, strength, preserve details, reduce color noise and sharpen details. The only one we want to use is the strength one. So set all the others to zero, but take the strength one all the way up to 10. Now, if I bring my cursor out, click on the dog's eye, and then in this huge preview box, I click down and release, down and release. You can see the before and after of what this effect is doing. And it's kind of really cool, smudgy, painterly kind of look. So we'll just click OK with that one for now. Photoshop now applies it. Once it's done that, because we've got a lot of detail in the dog's fur, I'm gonna apply it again. So we go filter, noise, reduce noise, but this time, rather than having the strength at 10, let's just bring it down just a little bit to around about seven, and then click OK. Now the effect that applies is really, really cool, very smudgy, very painterly, but the default side of that is that it actually removes all the sharpness. So to bring back some of the sharpness, we'll now turn on the sharpness layer, we'll go to filter, other and high pass. And in here we're gonna use a pixel radius only of around about one. Just enough so that you can see some of the detail of your picture showing through in the preview of the high pass filter or actually on the screen itself. And we can see some of the dog's hair here as we zoom in. That's plenty enough there. So we'll click OK. Now to reveal our picture with a little bit of the sharpening coming back, we'll just change the blend mode from normal to overlay. So now when we zoom to around about here, if I turn that on and off, you can probably, I'm hoping on your screen, just see that it has brought in a little bit of the sharpness. Now what I want to do is make the eyes really, really stand out, so they're very, very much of a focal point of the picture. So I'm gonna take off the effect off those eyes. With the uppermost layer selected, I'm gonna hold down my shift key, click on the one below it, the look layer, then I'll go to the fly out menu at the top right hand corner of the layers panel and choose new group from layers. And we'll call this one painterly, like so. I'm then gonna add a layer mask to that icon and then with a black foreground color, I'm just gonna get a normal brush Let's just zoom in and we'll paint that effect off the eyes. So they really do stand out now. And this one just here. So there we go, we've got that look so far on there. Turn it on and off, on and off. There's only one more thing that I want to do to really focus the actual attention right on the center of the dog's face. And that's just control the lighting just a little bit more. The way I'm going to do that is by first of all creating a merged or stamp layer at the top of the layer stack. We can do this by holding down a number of keys, Shift, Alt, Command and E, or Shift, Option, Control and E, or if you don't wanna do that, just go to the Select menu at the top of the screen and choose All, so that you get the marching ants going around the whole uh, perimeter of your picture. Then go to Edit, Copy Merged, Edit, and paste. And then what you'll find is at the top of the layer stack now we've got a new layer and if we turn all the other layers off nothing changes. That's because this layer at the top is a combination of all the layers below and we'll just call this one light. To actually control the light one last time I'm going to go to the filter menu and we'll choose convert for smart filters. So now that we've got the smart filter we'll go back to the filter menu choose camera raw and in here, I'm just gonna grab the radial filter, drag out an ellipse like so, bring the cursor just to shape it round into like an oval so that it's mainly over the center area here, something like this. Let's just drag it up just a touch from the bottom. We can click in the middle to position it where we want. I wanna make sure that all the lights on the eye just there that's looking good. And then just use the exposure now to control how much of that light we want to be uh, darkened down over around the outside of this oval. So we'll go for something around about there and click OK. That's looking pretty good if we turn that on and off. Great thing is because we use it as a smart filter, we can always double click on the actual name of the filter there to dive back in, grab the radial filter, and we can make some adjustments to it, make it darker or indeed lighter, whatever we want to. But I'm gonna leave it something like that and click okay. 
So there you go, that's just a very quick run through to show you the retouching steps to take you from what was the original out of camera picture here to something that looked like the final finished retouch picture here. We also talked about the photography, so don't forget, make sure you check out the actual YouTube channel where you can actually see how to actually learn that invisible black background technique here. And also the couple of blog posts over on my website, glyndewis.com, that will show you the lighting setup and also an example of the kit that I use to create that picture. But that's all for now, I'll see you next time.